Hi, my name is Ronald Johnson. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. So if you're suffering low self-esteem, a low confidence, or and it's affecting every facet of your life from relationships to career, this is where I can help. And I'm with an amazing person. Her name is Denise. So Denise, take it away, introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Denise Lewis, and I run Grand Slam Coaching. You can find me at grandslamcoaching.com. And my coaching business is based on performance. And you may wonder why I'm here with Ron talking about dating when dating is kind of a performance. But it's not. It is. About, it is. But it's not just about how to have the perfect date. This is all about how to present the best you that you can be. And if people enjoy it and want to be a part of it, awesome. And if they don't, let's move on to the next one. So you can always find me at Grand Slam. Yeah, you can always find me at GrandSlamCoaching.com, but I'm here with my good friend, Ron, and we're going to have some fun today. So thanks for joining us. Thank you everyone for joining and listening to this, this video. So I think we're at a whole new dynamics that most of us are trying to navigate. And today we're going to discuss, he said, she said, dating and a new norm. And how do you date with the fact that now dating may be through Zoom or dating may be distance dating or social distance. So I meet you at a park, but you're like 10 feet away so we can do FaceTime. How do you navigate all this? And for those out there that are not familiar with technology, they don't have a computer, right? Let's say they may have a smartphone. They don't know how to use a Zoom, never oh, created an account, don't want to create an account. How do you navigate this? So Denise, for you, Tell me, like, give me an idea of your experiences in dating. So that way we kind of get this thing started here. Okay, well, I'm, I've only been back in the dating world for a couple of years. And one thing that I find really annoying about the dating world is that people are so like this, behind their phone, hiding behind technology. And if you're going to go out and meet somebody, be it a friend, be it a colleague, whoever it is, the last thing you want to do is have your phone sitting in front of your face. If you're going to have your phone sitting in front of your face, then don't bother showing up. And I'm finding too that with dating, there's two different kinds of men. There's those who just want to be players and those who want to be taken care of, mm. which, you know, they've lost their wives. They've been divorced. They say that they eat out all the time because they don't know how to cook and they want someone to cook and clean for them. Well, you Ooh. know what, honey? It's called a maid, hire that, and then let's have some fun. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it's kind of these two extremes. And it's, it's for women of my generation and even younger, although the millennials are, they're just a weird bunch. Um, we were all taught, I mean, I was taught by my parents, stand up on your own two feet, do your own thing. Don't depend on anybody and certainly don't depend on a man. And it's not that I don't mind, I, I would like to lean on somebody, but I want to bring my own stuff to the party, if that makes sense. I've, you know, what you said some, my mom told me, so she's 70, going to 71, she's be 71 August of 2021. And she's been single for a while. And she says, you know, son, I said, mom, why don't you date and stuff like that? She says, no. I says, why not? I don't want to take care of no man. She literally <laughs> says, I don't want to get a man that he has high blood pressure because you know she's seventy. You get okay, high blood pressure, overweight, high cholesterol. He wants to cook and clean for him because my mom right now, she has like a four pack. She's in like one hundred and ten to one hundred and fifteen pounds, about five foot five. She has an amazing physique. She looks like she's in her fifties. She so, wants to a four pack because she's only five foot something like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only have a four pack too. <laughs> So, so she said, I don't take care of no man. Like, yeah, you know, it's just like, you know, you know, from our generation, especially, you know, being in the fifties, a man wants to a woman to take care of him. She's like, hell no, I'm not taking care of no man. You know, yeah. we take care of each other. We can grow together. We can learn together. I'm not taking care of no man. So she says, you know what? I'm just going to be single for the rest of my life. Now, if someone comes my way in my life that can add value, that's a different story. And that's where you got to look at that. How does it contribute to your life? And I remember when I was out there on the, on the dating scene, I would hate this. 
and I didn't figure this out. So I had my own issues, right, with dating. Um, so I thought Match. Doc, so I did three different websites. I did Match.com. Mm -hmm. If they're still around, I think they are. I did yeah, they are. Fish. I did Old oh, K Cupid. I ain't went on Craigslist at the time to find dates. Okay, because <laughs> you know the more the merrier. The more hands you got, and and the more irons in the fire, the more actually one's gonna work, right? So. Is but it I realized Craigslist where you have the paid dates, by the way. <laughs> that, that that's that's you know when I was dating, I realized the free ones you got a lot of people. So let's put it out there. With the free ones, it was easy to get someone a sack. That's just the reality. They were. It was just yep. maybe they're going to some issue, but it was easy in the sack. With the ones with paid ones, a little more difficult. So I first got on match.com. I was saying to myself, okay, I found this girl. We start communicating back and forth, you know. All right, so now we're gonna do the meet and greet. So for about a week, week and a half, we're on the phone for about an hour every day. We're talking, and I want the freshest girl. Okay, so I pulled out all the stops. I went to Nordstrom's. Hold on, I went to Nordstrom. I got a hundred fifty dollar pair of jeans. I got a nice brand new fresh shirt from Express for Men. I booked at a place called Alexander Steakhouse in Cupertino. So those that know Alexander's, it's one of the high-end restaurants in Silicon Valley. Um, let's just give an idea. Uh, for two people, that means drinks, appetizers, main course, and dessert, it can be about 250 to 500 in a whole for two people, give or take what wow. you order, what kind of stuff. So, and, and hold on, and that's including tip. So the first day we go out, I'm smoothing her. I'm going to get this girl. I'm going to win. That's the, that's the guy in me. I'm going to win. <laughs> we, I, I'm telling you. So we're having a dinner and um, I order steak. She's ordering her steak. We're on appetizers. Guys come around with the bread. We get just having a good time. We drink our wine. Then we're stinking whiskey, get a neat. And then Alexander's known for his big cotton candy. So you order cotton, we got cotton candy. We got dessert. We looked around and it was like, 10 o'clock at night, we shutting it down when the last one was there. <laughs> it was like 550, I think, after everything. I'm like, man, I got the, I got this sucker. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get it because she was pretty, you know. And I, I really hope liked it was the good first conversation. Night. Conversation's great. Like I said, we spent on a, an hour every night before you met on the phone. I mean, we're texting back and forth. So that was, I think, a Thursday. So I saw her again on Friday. And I, I think the following week I see her. So we're kind of hanging out. I mean, you, you have to hang out. This phone conversation is cool. Texting is cool. But to spend that time, you have to figure it out. So I called, I don't remember the person's name, but I call her pretty face. She had a really pretty face. She had the makeup going on. She had the smile. I liked her. So we went to the gym together, uh, I think once or twice. Uh, so every time I start realizing this after the fact, we're going out to these nice restaurants and I'm putting my credit card down. I'm putting the tip down. I'm putting everything down. And then one night we had this, uh, God, what was it called? But anyways, we're at this restaurant and it closed down or it closed at nine o'clock. We still want to hang out. We go say, okay, Google. Oh, BJ's still open. So the BJ's, because they're closed at one or two o'clock and we can get some more alcohol. So right. we shut that place down about midnight. I go out to the car and you know I'm thinking, okay, she likes me, we're in. I go reaching for a kiss. She goes like this. I was like, what? I was like, is everything okay? She's like, yeah, I'm just not that type of girl. <laughs> yeah, that shows up. You know, I'm not the time. Oh, okay, you know, whatever it is. And then I text him and I say, hey, are we on the same page? Because I was feeling a certain way. And that's what comes down to communicating. I was feeling a certain way. Something, okay, it's okay to kiss. We went out a few times. We share a lot of things in common. I guess what should be communicated, I guess we're going to proceed forward. I was going to shut down my match page. I was ready to go. Long story short, it didn't work out. She tells me, Ron, you know what? Um, you're too bougie for me. You know, I'm used to being in a relationship with a guy where I'm the pretty one and you're just totally different. Ooh, First well, I heard that. Too pretty for, you, for her. Okay. That, that's what, hey, I, I'm not making this stuff up. This is real story. But the point of the story is after that first date, again, I'm doing the same process, stupid, stupid process again. I'm going now, I spend fancy dinners, paying this, paying that. So what I started doing is, you know, it, you got to realize I'm paying for the online match.com. I'm paying for the dinners and I'm paying for the drinks. I had to get a second date rule. And the second date rule was this. If a woman does not do three things, offer to pay half, look at the bill or pay the tip. That's it. She will not see me the third time. Make sure she's going to see me the third time anyways. 
But I did that because I got tired of thousands of dollars in a hole just trying to, because the idea, see, the thing is, is it wasn't the women, right? It was just me. Here yeah. I'm thinking as a, as a mindset of a man, hey, I got to impress this woman. I got to impress this woman. And I was doing all this stuff, anything I did to impress them. And more importantly, is that we're lying to ourselves because we always think we have to be an actor or a different person. So not to show who we are. But yep, second date rule started then, and that was where I dated from then on. Until I found and, someone I really like being with. Go ahead. Well, well, yeah, now, now you found someone you really like being with. And, and it's funny, we're so on the same page because my first date rule, you have your three for the Ooh. second date. My, my first date rule is, okay. number one, I'm going to pick a place that's going to be centrally located between the two of us. And we're oh, going to okay. meet there. And then I, I am very much a stickler of, particularly if I'm driving there, I'm only going to drink Arnold Palmer's because I've got to drive myself home. Mm -hmm. And I purposely pick inexpensive places because if he offers to pay all of it, I'm not stinging him for a ton. I always offer to pay half, offer to pay the tip. And if I really don't like the guy, it has to be something in my price range. So if I have to do a runner and go find the waiter, back <laughs> by the restaurants, here's my card, run it through and boom, I'm gone without a second glance, you know? Right. So, um, <clears throat> and then, and then depending on how, you know, as long as they, if they walk me to my car, a hug and a kiss on the cheek is appropriate. Sometimes a kiss on the mouth, depending on how I really like the guy. And then we'll see what happens on the second date, you know? Wow. Okay. So with that being said, from a woman's perspective, when is it right for a guy to go in for a kiss? It can be after the first date, but there's got to be good conversation. But I, I don't think you need all the fancy dinners and all the fancy. Look nice, absolutely. But you don't need to dress it up with all of that. You really don't. I'd rather go to the, the $5 taqueria place because the food is really awesome. The atmosphere is great but you can still have a conversation without having to shout at any, at, at your partner across the table, you know? Yeah. And I also like going to places where, and this is why it's really nice living in Walnut Creek because I had one date. I told him that my, the thing I wanted to do was to hit as many restaurants as we could in one night. Oh, that's cool. So the rule was go to Opa, share one appetizer, have one drink, then walk around. And then we went to, I think we went to Monacatini's for one appetizer that we shared and then another drink. And then we, so we started, and then we wound up at Fleming's way on the other end. And I kind of bopped it around so that um, everywhere we were going, we we're hitting happy hour. So everything. Oh, look at that. Planned and, out. And I said, you cannot have, if you have the flaming cheese at Opa, you can't have it somewhere else. So if, we, so, and there's a you know, couple of steakhouses in the moment, a couple of Italian places. So if we had, the Carpaccio and Monacatini, we couldn't repeat Carpaccio somewhere else. We had to have something different until we were full. And because we were walking around in between every spot, we could then say, oh, we'll look and comment on this. That Do we want to try this place? Oh, that doesn't look good. Or, oh, I've been there and it really kind of stinks and blah, blah, blah. And that was really fun. And we really got to know each other. And of course, you know, kind of window shop through through Walnut Creek on the way. And that was a fun date. And he, he paid for everything. Um, nice guy but then he broke up with me by text the next day because um i was very upfront saying i still have to work for a living i have a son to raise my teenager uh he was retired he wanted someone who could pick up and go travel okay so, which which was fine and totally reasonable and fine and thank goodness it didn't go any more than that but um every time i offered to pay he he wouldn't hear of it um but at least every, everywhere we went because i figured out, mapped out all the happy hours. Everything was cheap. <laughs> there you go. Five or 10 bucks, five or 10 bucks. There you go. That's it. Yeah. Like, like 12 or 15 bucks each place. Yeah. With tip. So, so it was fun. I mean, it was a good time. So, you know what? It's funny sitting here hearing a woman's perspective of something and a man's perspective is a little bit more different. Um, I think after the first if the chemistry is right, even a kiss on the first day can happen too. Mm -hmm. If the chemistry is right, because if you're just if the chemistry is there, you get lost in everything else. It is what it is. If you're just in with that person, but I, I'm thinking to myself, really curious dating, and especially I'm talking about then, then being before COVID, 
that you would be able to go multiple dates, you'd be able to meet people, you'd be able to socialize. Because the easy thing for me, what I used to do on dating, if I go to, on, let's say, for example, I meet someone for dating, you know, I didn't like the way they look, I didn't like the hair, the way it was done. What I do is go right to my smartphone, open up the app, I'm right back on it again. <laughs> swiping left and swiping right or whatever it is like that. I never did the swipes. I but I did always message people. And it was like my first start match.com, my trend was going up for responses. Cause for me, I would have to send at least a hundred messages. I maybe probably massage a little bit, but a lot to get a response. Then I have to massage my my profile to make it be appealing. Cause Oh, a lot of people do in, you know, first thing you do is look at a profile and look at the pictures. Yeah. Then after you look through the one to five, they don't have, they, they didn't have more than one. Um, I would be skeptical. Or if it's one picture, but it's really in the background or they didn't have, it's kind of what they've done or what they do. I kind of, that's it. Next one. If there's no picture, forget about it. I'm not going to respond at all. Someone will have like 25, 30 pictures. I'm like, oh my goodness, what are you doing here? But I would look through the pictures, then I'll read the profile. So in my case, I realized, wait a minute, I gotta make myself be this outrageous, confident, amazing, supporter, lovable man to get somebody. So what I start doing is a head headline of my messages, I'll say athletic and ambitious. That's good. So so just just to get that lure going, because yeah. then allow people now to respond back. What do you mean by athletic? We'd be ambitious. Then here, then there we go. And some people wouldn't respond at all, which is fine. But now with COVID, online is really only one, unless you meet a friend or a friend, but then you're worried about getting COVID and getting sick. I'm trying to think now, listening to my friends and doing the research online. It's not as simple as just opening up a phone and calling somebody. They actually now have apps in with an app. So Match now has app for Zoom or whatever they're using at this point. I think it's Zoom. You can actually look at somebody. But now they got to worry about the background going on. You right. got to worry about your virtual background. Everybody's looking at what you have in the background, what's going on. I mean, right now with the situation you're still single, Denise, how are you dating with the new norm? Or if you already even are. Well, it's, it's, it's been difficult. Um, and I have to admit too, that, um, I, I came from a very dark, dark relationship. Um, and it took a while just to even trust myself to get out and not completely fall apart. And, um, so I had a few real, I, I had a few really bad first dates and, but you know what, I'm over it. And my whole thing is I'm just about the fun. You know, I want to, I want to, I'm approaching this as this is always an opportunity to meet a new friend and to make a good friend. And a big tip for me, I have a dog, love my dog. My dog needs to be walked every day. And I had one person who worked nights and would like randomly show up at 6 30 in the morning. I'm like, okay, well I'm here and I'm walking the dog and you're either walking with me or you're getting in your car and driving home. Okay. You know, and if you can't, if you can't even take the time to walk the dog with me on occasion to then have some good one-on-one -on -one talking and good one-on-one -on -one exercise time, then, you know, keep moving on. So mm. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm into fun. I don't need, I love fancy restaurants. I love jewelry. I love nice clothes. I love all that stuff, but I just want to have fun. Let's go on a hike. Let's go play pickleball, let's go wine tasting, whatever it is, play around a golf. I don't care. I just want to have fun. Just don't get pissed if I win. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, hmm. so do you think men have it all backwards? I think in a way, you know, I'm more impressed by someone's character and, and by their moral compass. And my dad, my dad always said, if you cheat at golf, you cheat at life. And it's true. And my my ex, when we were dating, he followed the rules of golf. And the minute we got married and I got pregnant, that's when he started cheating at golf. And that's when I was like, holy cow, I've got to get out of this. And it took me a long time to get out of it. Um, mm -hmm. But we but our you know we had our son. We, he was a toddler. He was a baby. We had a we had a business. We had all sorts of stuff. It took me what sixteen years to get out of it. I mean that's crazy. Wow. Um, yeah, it was really, really awful. But there are certain, yeah, I'm more into the whole, 
moral compass and and can you have fun because in covid you have to make lemons out you have to make lemonade out of the lemons that we have you know new year's eve is tomorrow night what am i doing i can't go out to a bar because they're all closed can't hang out with friends because we're all in lockdown so you know what my son and i we're gonna make some food and he's gonna have martinelli's and i'm gonna have champagne we're gonna zoom a few people and watch a movie Oh, I, I got a lot. I, I got to know. What do you mean if you cheat at life, you cheat at golf? I heard it once. We got to break it down. If you cheat what does that at mean? golf, you cheat at life. You, if you break cheat at golf. Okay. <clears throat> you shoot a five on a hole. You write down a four on the card. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you hurting by that? Only yourself. Ah, integrity. It's all about integrity. And it's okay, it's only golf. It's a game. Even Tiger Woods misses putts on occasion. Even the professionals shank it left or shank it right. Who cares? You just pick it up and you move on. Hmm. So if you cheat at golf, you cheat at life. And my, oh, my dad was a lawyer. God, I wish he was here, you'd really dig him. He would go, to Hilton Head Island for a week of golf camp with my mom. And he was a senior partner in a law firm. He had to, headed up the business division. And the partners would say, oh, we found out that, you know, Ron Johnson's going to be there and you need to land him. He's got a $25 million piece of business that we want, blah, blah, blah. And my dad would come back from the week of golf or even just a round of golf, you know, whatever. And they'd say, oh, did you sign Ron? Did you sign Ron? And my dad would say, well, no, because he, he mismarked a card. And, and they would be like, how could you turn on a $25, $25 million piece of business? My dad would be like, oh, but it was really cool though, because when we were in the clubhouse afterwards, I met this other guy named Kincaid. I signed a $30 million piece of business. I mean, this was the kind of guy he was. If you're going to cheat on a golf card, you're going to cheat me out of my bill. You're not going to pay me for my services. You're not going to be upfront and honest with the information I need to make you look good or to do whatever the you know business needs to be done properly. Does that make sense? I love that. I know. I love that saying. Now I'm going to remember that if you cheat, if you cheat at golf, you cheat at life because no yeah. person in golf, you're cheating yourself. You have a scorecard. You write down whatever you want to write down. Yeah, exactly. And, and there's nothing, nothing is worse than a poor loser other than a poor winner. That's right. Because you know what? The, the bottom line is no one's perfect. Yeah. And bottom line is you're going to miss that hole but you still keep your integrity. Yeah. You still keep exactly. what you value. You still keep your principles. Yeah. So day now, since, cause I'm looking at these principles we're talking about, I guess when I was out there dating, I didn't have any values or principles and that's why nothing ever worked out. What it came down to this couple of th different things. I had a criteria, right? Our laundry list, everybody has one. She had to look a certain way, be a certain height, have a certain body build, had to be athletic, had to be smart, had to have business, not a business, but something going on, a career. I went with this one, didn't have that because I like to travel, I like to do different things. But I really realized this, listen to you, is I was so fixated on having those features. So if you miss one out of those five, yeah, done, done. Because I became so fixated on these features that I realized after time, I was lacking those. So I want to build myself up by finding someone that had that more confidence, had the better career, had the better education, had everything I was lacking because I wasn't built up enough to have confidence. Because dating is not just I'm meeting somebody. Dating is a, is a dance that lasts yeah. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And we always try to put the best foot forward, uh, getting that person. and when I was dating, which we all kind of do, we have an ABC. A is a guy or girl that you like, that you want to be with, that you want to date. B is a, uh, C is if A and B don't work out, so you got C. And when I was doing those kind of things, I was just killing myself. Thursday, I go with A. Friday, B's texting me, but I'm trying to tell C I'll meet it with her. I'm keeping C on, on the lure just so that way I can keep, just in case these don't work out, I have that. Nothing ever worked out because you were because, doing because you you weren't being true to you and you know oh. the C person 
who you totally overlooked because they were missing two of your five qualities could have been a really good friend. And there were, you know, when I was dating a lot, when I first started dating, cause I went on to um, elite singles. Um, it happened to be like in the fall, there was a lot of football going on and there was Monday and Thursday night football. And there were a couple guys, I'd go meet them. The staff was like, man, she's here with another guy, but blah, 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 blah. But I yeah. had my jersey on. I was like, look, we're just going to go have wings or whatever we eat, pub food, have a couple drinks. We're going to watch football, your team, my team, whatever, friendly bet. Um, let's just go have some fun. And two of them are still like my football buddies. We realized we had, awesome. didn't have any chemistry together, but we enjoyed each other's company. And so it's nice to go and watch football. Um, there was another guy I went on a date with. You're going to love this story. <laughs> I'm listening. Tell me. <laughs> we went to this place called Sauced in Walnut Creek and they have um, hatchet throwing. So you get in the cage, you throw the hatchets against the wood. Now I'm normally right-handed, but my right arm does not work terribly well. So I threw left-handed and you're in this cage and you could do five at no cost. And then if you really liked it, you had to pay like 20 bucks for half an hour and, you know, do your thing. So I was like, okay, let's go try it. So I get up to throw left hand and of course it went clonk, clonk and stuck yeah. one and clonk, clonk. And the guy was like looking at me and I'm like, come on, your turn. And when he stuck a couple, I was like, oh, yeah, you good for you, whatever. Yeah. And he said, Denise, he said, I think you're holding back and I want you to, I want to see you throw right handed. And I was thinking to myself, oh, fuck, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I did hatchet throwing at scout camp with my son and I'm right handed and I can rope cattle, do all sorts of stuff. So I get up there with my hatchet. Boom, 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 boom. All five, all in, in the bullseye. Wow. And I turned and looked at him and I smiled and I said, sexy attribute or scary insight, you decide. And I never heard from him again after that. <laughs> you know what? Maybe he's too embarrassed. Like, man, she killed it. I can't compete with that. I'm out of here. It just, it just happened. And I just, I'm sorry. It just, you know, it happened, but... <laughs> attribute or scary it's like you got to choose i think he, pick your poison yeah he decided it was a scary a scary yeah. inside <laughs> so so the question being is you know have you heard the term ghost did he ghost on you uh he could he he reached out a couple more times well he reached out a couple more times after that and then he would let's go here but then cancel and then finally he was like you really scared me with the hatchet throwing <laughs> i was like <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, from day one. Yeah, I, I said that's fine. That's not a problem. We don't have to go hatchet throwing. But I, I thought he's like, nah. I just he said that's in the back of my mind. I'll let, I'll reach out to you. He did reach out a few months later and wish me a merry Christmas. And we talked for you know, texted for a little bit. But then you know he's he went on his way and that's fine. You know. You know what? I, I it's really great that you can say those things. That's fine. I can do that. See. When I was into somebody, I was into women. So if I wanted to A, even though she would cancel on me, she would be like dog crap, wasn't sexually intimate, I, I'm holding on for dear life, baby. I'm telling you, the ship is going down. I'm the captain that's going to go down with the ship. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling Good you, I would go you, down. Good for you, Captain Ron. <laughs> I'm going right down. I'm going down the ship because I couldn't let go. Yeah. I could not freaking let go because especially if it was like, uh, I'll give you an example. The one that I couldn't let go of, she was about five foot one. She had these nice big boobs. She was confident. I mean, every time I went out, guys were staring at her. Um, she, her closet is full of clothes and shoes. So she always had a different outfit, taking care of herself. She had a BMW, but shit. I could not let it go. I could not let it go. I mean, even what's so bad is I'm literally begging for her. So for example, I wouldn't see her for let's say a couple of days or a week, two weeks. Mm -hmm. My phone rings, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, how you doing? You know, I, I, I can't miss the call. Yeah. I'm doing good, I'm, how you doing? I said, I'm hurting you. Well, I've been busy. Do you miss me? Yes, I do. Okay, uh, my lunch now is in 30 minutes. Can you meet me at this place? Oh, I'm on my way. Yeah. I mean, it was like that bad. And I'm like, hey, I haven't heard from you. I really missed you. Yeah, I'm busy. You know, just, I know I'm the shit. 
And it went so far as I'm literally begging to have sex. I, I could not believe what I was subjecting myself to. Mm-hmm. And this is what a lot of people do is that we all subject ourselves to something they have that we want. So the abuse doesn't have to be physical. It can be totally emotional. It's like yeah. a, the best way I would say it, have you heard the song? I'm your puppet. No, pull my string, I'll sing you a dance. Yeah. I thought I was like freaking put, uh, Pinocchio. Hand goes up, right hand goes up, foot goes up, head goes back. Yeah. And I, I remember us being intimate and she's like, hurry up and come. Hurry up. <laughs> wow. Wow. I she mean, had you on it. Wow. I'm so, man, I would have, if a guy had done that to me, I would have been like, see you later, honey. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not the tipping ice. So one day, you know, at the time I had a Hyundai Sonata. She had a BMW, right? So I'm driving her car. She didn't want to drive. And we get talking about a situation. And don't know all the details, but I remember this. She says, Ron, you know, I have so many guys that want me that are multimillionaires. What do you have to offer me? I'm like, I'm going, I'm going, my, my confidence went down for like an ant. Right. And I, I can say anything. What am I going to say? Because th- the reality is, he or she doesn't matter. If somebody knows that you we get something, they will attack it. Like, you know, it'll, 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 like sharks in water. This my blood. Yeah. Now, at that someone says it to me today, tell you what, the door is right there. They'll let it hit you on the way out. Because the reality is, if there's so many guys that want her, that millionaires, why is she with me? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Be- she, because she's a, she's a player. She's a game player. Right. And the thing is, it's like a, a chess piece. You're keeping all your pieces lined up. You got your pawns, you got your bishops, you got your king, mm-hmm. you got to keep everything organized. Because the thing being is that maybe the guy she wanted didn't want her. So she, okay, I'm the C dude that always be there. And wow, I was really in a bad spot in that relationship. Um, I don't even call it a relationship. I think it was just of convenience. Mm-hmm. convenience. For her. Yeah. For her. For her. And for me, because when she did give me intimacy or kiss me, I, I'm just, oh my God, you hold my hand. Oh my God, you give me a kiss. Oh my God, you, we had sex. <sighs> I don't do that anymore. Yeah. And the person actually texted me, uh, um, what was it, a month ago? Out the blue. Actually, it was back really? in July. The first time was back in July. And we haven't seen each other in years. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm sorry what I've done to you. I was in, you know, her and I were on and off the years, right? So it wasn't like the first account. Her and I had history. But that was, you know, the cam- the straw book came back. That was it. And um, she says, I apologize. That's fine. You know, whatever. She texts me back in, just in November. And she's, hey, uh, how are you doing? Did I leave some documents at your place? I'm like, I saw you like four or five years ago. What documents are you talking about? If there wasn't documents, I burned them. Yeah. <laughs> Not literally, but I got Yeah, rid they're of them. gone, they're gone. But here's the details. Why don't you just ask me how I'm doing? What yeah. doc, you think I held on some documents for four or five years? We don't have kids together, we're not married, we don't have any assets together. You're old news, I moved on. But it's just how some people like to just- Yeah. Kind of, Troll. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm not getting any bias. Means, ah, I got one. Or I just didn't respond it. Well, yeah. I mean, because who knows where she is at, at 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 her position in life now? But in the what 18 year, 18 months, two years that I've known you, I mean, look at you. You've become this amazing person. I mean, you were you were from from the time I met you to now, you've grown so much and you've turned into this wonderful person. I could just imagine how much you've grown from when you knew her, you know? Oh. I mean, leaps and bounds. I mean, you're, you're talking about a 360 degree turn. You know, it's amazing. So of course, of course she'd go on a troll back to Ron who was ready to, you know, give her everything and drop everything for her, you know? Oh, that's, that's not it. Um, have you heard a red bottoms, a cruise Christian Louboutin shoes? The red bottom. Bottom. 
are the brand is called Christian Louboutin. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The red bottom shoes. Yeah. I brought, I, I was so desperate to have her. I brought her those shoes a long time ago. <laughs> she had you wrapped around her little finger, my friend. Buddy, the, the, the neck was, the, the, the noose is right here. The noose was I tight, mean, baby. It was tight. Um, I can I remember one time I bought her 100 red roses and all I got was, she sent me a picture on my phone. These must cost a fortune. And that was it. <laughs> you know what's more powerful than a dozen roses? One. Is this? <laughs> one. One single rose. One single flower. It doesn't even have to be a rose. One flower can be far more powerful to a woman than armfuls of flowers. But, but boys, down to this though, how you will appreciate one rose picked off a rose garden, no matter what I did, it wasn't good enough. For and her. the value wasn't there for her. For Everybody her. else, 100 red roses would love it, but I was so stupid in the thinking that this would prove to be more worthy. I went as far as in the rose almost every week from a dozen to three dozen every week. Bank count going down the drain. Yeah. And at fast, trying to keep up with this because I want to prove I can take care of her and I loved her. And boy, and I, 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 talking to you, I, I all we all are going to face something like this in our life. Mm -hmm. And it boils down to... How do we value ourselves? Like, do we value ourselves enough to really say, I'm getting out of the situation. This is serving me. I can only say these things now because I have more experience. But what would you say to this, Denise? I mean, if you're going through a situation like this or someone is right now, like, how, how would you get out of it? Getting out of it can be really, really tough. It can be really hard. And I'm, I've got to move as the sun is setting now a little bit. Um, That's okay. It's it's hard and it's tough, but it, what it really boils down to is how much respect do you have for yourself? And what I had to get out of almost killed me. Um, mm -hmm. It was very emotional, and emotionally and verbally abusive. I, I kind of wish he had hit me because it would have made the break a lot cleaner a lot sooner, but I still, I found my inner pillar of strength. I found my value. And you talk about pulling yourself up from your bootstraps. And yeah, it's great that I can sit in here and say, now I don't need jewelry. I don't need nice things. I don't, you know, one single flower will do me, but it's true because I don't need all the flash and sizzle. I had it. And it's great in small doses, but I want, I want to see the core of the person. I want to see, I want to see what their pillars are like. I want to see what their morals are like. How do they behave? How do they treat people? You know, and 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 can they have fun? That's more important. I can have fun with as long as I can have fun with you. And if I, you know, if I want to go do some charity work or do the the turkey trot to raise money for the school system, you know, be there with me. You know, I don't have to run. I just walk it with me. Walk the dog with me. Fine. Let's just go do something simple and easy, you know? And then if you want to put me on your private jet and fly me off to Paris for the weekend, I can do that too. <laughs> but, but it's, but it's day, it's, it's basic day-to-day -day living. If I cook the dinner, will you clean up? If you choose to cook, for, don't tell me you're going to cook me dinner and then order takeout. That's a cop out. That's rude. Yeah. Just say, I'm just going to order dinner. Fine. I'm cool with that. But if you're going to cook me dinner, then cook me dinner. And I don't care if it's hot dogs or mac and cheese, you know, just as long as it's relatively edible, <laughs> you know? The, okay, you don't want to keep up with some baits for your dog, right? <laughs> you don't want to have well, that for dinner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I can, well, I was also a chef for 18 years. And a lot of people think, oh, my God, and you can cook all this French food. And, and, and yeah, I can cook a lot of different food. And I can cook really, really well, which is why... You want to make chili dogs? Man, I'm so all over that as yeah. long as I don't have to cook it, you know? Because yeah. um, because that shows that you have heart. That shows that you have a care factor. 
You don't have to keep up with me. Just be the best you that you can be. This is where getting where performance gets into it. You know, Ron, if your best dish is homemade pizza with homemade dough, fantastic. Because that shows that you care. Right. And, and that's where it gets into us in the very beginning. Um, Self-esteem and confidence. Mm -hmm. The more success we have, the more confidence we, ha we have in our lives, the more success we're going to have in our lives. Mm -hmm. See, when I was going through these traumatic experiences with these relationships, because relationships prior to me was a huge factor to the point where I would take on relationships and no business being in because I'm afraid of being alone. I never knew it was like to really actually be alone and not dating or being with anybody for a period of time. I mean, not just a couple of weeks. I'm talking about maybe for a couple of months or maybe a couple of years. I never experienced that because when we get into relationships, I, I don't care where you are. Old wounds can come up. It can be a small trigger. It can be, and these things come up that we haven't dealt with. So while I was able to navigate the life the best I knew at that time, how to navigate my life, thinking I had confidence, but all it took is for her to say, you're not a millionaire, what can you offer me? Boom, confidence got hit. If you're such a confident person, it wouldn't bother you. They can say, well, Ron, you know, you should have more confidence than that. You should have a person get out of here. Yeah, but you're talking to a person that didn't have it. I mean, it's easy to say something if you don't have it. So that's why I really work with people that have that the confidence issue, have a self-esteem issue, because if you don't have the right kind of confidence or the right self-esteem or how you view yourself or your values, it's like a defective steering wheel. If you mm -hmm. drive down a highway and defective wheel goes out, you're like, oh my God, where am I going to go? What's, what's going to happen to myself? And that's what happens to your life. If you don't understand what confidence, your values, your pillars or principles, it's like the effect of staying one life. It would go everywhere but loose. You're hitting this way, you're hitting that way all over the place. And that's where my life was. Mm -hmm. I liked abuse, not physical, but emotional abuse because I didn't have the confidence of myself. And that is something I was bringing to relationships. And that's what their utter failure because I was bringing that baggage. I was bringing the old wounds. I was using things I thought were healthy. Like if this person proved to give me great sex, they must love me. Now yeah. that sounds well, that may sound well, that doesn't make sense. But for someone that thinks that or isn't aware that that is the case, it is true. I thought that she gave me great sex, she loved me. So, when I got involved with the woman I told you about before that had um, that couldn't leave the baby's daddy and all that kind of mess, you know why I got involved with her? It's not because she was a billionaire. It's because she was especially educated. We met, we had some amazing sex a few times, and I'm hooked. Yeah, like a drug addict, like a drug. I mean, this is clearly just an yeah. addiction because I'm thinking because that's really a huge pillar of mine. That's how I give love, which I didn't know until now. And it's how I want to receive love. So the better the sex was, the better I thought the person loved me, which is total BS. Anybody yeah. can use some great stuff one way or another in life. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me let me pose this to you. Let me, uh, and this is going to be an interesting question. So brace yourself. I'm ready. I'm holding on, holding on, holding on. Okay. You talk about self-esteem. You, you talk about confidence. Mm. I believe that you can't have either of those two qualities with unless you have self-respect and great sex is not the cake great sex is the icing on the cake mm -hmm. because the cake itself is having the respect for yourself to love yourself and love someone else mm -hmm. and share that love Here's the thing is. Oh, there's the dog. Coco, stop. They, they, I, I guess he has a comment too. <laughs> Coco, no, it's so not about you right now. She's just wagging her tail like, I just want some attention. He yeah, gets exactly. I, I'm here. Yeah. I do talk about confidence. I do talk about self esteem. And I really believe everybody's self esteem and confidence is at a different stage for themselves. Absolutely. And will always be an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. 
But sex is a rocky foundation. I would not build a house on quicksand because it's going to sink. Yep. And that's how I built my life or my relationships is on quicksand. I built this amazing house. Oh, it's great. It's things going well. It starts crumbling all down. You're like, what? Why is root uh, cracking? Why is this happening? Because I built it on something that was rocky. Mm -hmm. Because sex is an emotion, and emotions that that sex is not a. It's not like sex is great for eight hours. Okay, it's about that much. Yeah. But you put so much, if something's about this long. You put so much emphasis on that item. I mean, all the weight on it. Remember, it's only this much. Yeah. So if I'm trying to build a house, and the house is humongous, but I'm built on this platform, it's going to be rocky. Mm -hmm. But what I believe is, is these are things you have to be aware of. I am only can talk about them because I'm aware of them. And I have no problem saying what they are for me. But I talked about this because there were some pillars in my life that I put so much pressure on that I was hurting myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, understand. And I love the I love the house analogy. I love yeah. the house analogy. And and having been a chef, I'm always going to use food analogy. <laughs> but, <you laughs> of course. Know, it, it is what it is. But yeah. um for me, when it comes to respect, I get that nine times that one time out of ten, I'm gonna walk into I'm gonna come home and have whoever my significant other is be like, oh my god, I've got a problem, you know, whatever. They're having a meltdown. But the other nine times, could I at least get a hello, hi, honey, how are you? How was your day? Yeah. If a hug and a kiss comes with that man, even better. But just acknowledging the fact that I, your significant other, the person is there. I never understood this until my marriage with my ex, because when I was when I was a kid, dinner was at six. And dad would call from the office. I'm on, he was on his way home. It was about 15 minutes from the office. And we'd, we could hear the garage door open. And then we'd gather and we'd all go greet him by the door. And then we'd sit down and have dinner. And if he was running late, we'd sit down to dinner. If he came home in the middle, we'd get up from the table, go and greet him, go back down and sit for dinner. It was acknowledging him and giving him respect as a human being, not just our father. And then when I would, and then when I was fast forward to my marriage, when I would come home and be greeted with oh good you're home this house is a disaster area it looks like a bunch Ooh. of people live in it and it's like seriously not even a hello so see where i'm coming from with that if that made sense it's all about that that sucks because i work too let's say in your case you came yeah. home he says house is in shambles someone cleans it up I work too. You've been home all day. You can't contribute. It's yeah. relationships are not one sided. No, we all not. have to contribute to the village, whatever the village is. Yeah. And to come home and hear that, it's like time after time. It's like I work too. I'm stressed too. I have a lot of things going on. We have a kid. You know, I just picked them from the babysitters. You've been home drinking a beer or whatever you're doing. You could pick up a little bit. It's contributing. Say, so say, hey, I'm gonna take out the garbage because as the garbage is full. Not say, hey, I'm gonna wait for Denise to come home to get the garbage because it's full. Yeah. Those are painful things. Yeah. And by the way, I really suck at the Festival of Domestic Arts. I've learned <laughs> to get a lot better in my own place. So I, I get a you know performance and I get an improvement and award on that one. But mm -hmm. but the cement of a house, you can't have the mortar that holds your bricks together of your house for me is just respect. That so if huge. you're gonna if you're going to build this house and it's respect for yourself, it's respect for other human beings. I mean, it's true. Do one to others as you would like to have them do to you. So the first step in that is, do you have respect for yourself? Like, do you respect yourself? All walks, whatever you do in your life. Do you respect yourself of makes you work hard? Do you respect yourself enough to say, no, I don't like that. Do you respect yourself enough to stand up for yourself? Mm -hmm. Think so. I have respect. I respect the janitor. I respect this person. But do you have enough confidence and respect to say, "Hey, I don't like this. I want to have this instead of my life." Yeah, it's it's it's. You're right, Ron. It's about having respect to stand up for yourself. Be it telling your boss, "No, I'm sorry, I can't work another weekend," or "I'm sorry that you know I'm planning to leave at ten to five because I have commitments," and you're telling me it at at. at 
15 minutes before five o'clock that I need to stay for seven o'clock. Sorry. And in these days of technology, I'll catch the Zoom meeting from home or I'll catch the conference call from home, whatever. Um, I mean, obviously you're not going to do it when you're going to blow your career, but yeah. but it's having the, yeah, standing up for yourself. Um, that's hugely important. And I didn't, I had it for a long time. I lost track of it for a long time. I found it again. And I've been on my own now for what, six years, six years. Am I lonely? Yeah, on occasion. Of course I am. I mean, it's human nature. We're, we're meant to be with other people, but I'm actually okay being by myself for now. Mm -hmm. I'd like that to change, but you know what? I'm not going to get married again. I want to be able to visit the sandbox, pick up my toys anytime I bloody well want and leave when I want, <laughs> you know? And any man I'm with is going to have to understand that and for now. Woo, oh, me and change, woo me and change my mind. Yeah, I like that. And you know what? On top of that respect, set some damn boundaries for yourself. Absolutely. That's Big boundaries. Yourself. So I, I want to say this to, to our listeners out there. And this is kind of overall perspective. I want you to stop making yourself sick. I want you to stop doing the things you do not like. I want you to stop and ask yourself, what do you want to do? What life do you want to have? What are your dreams? Absolutely. And really start pursuing those. Because you can stay in any relationship, you can stay in any career and say, well, I got to stay because of the kids and my husband pays the bills or my husband says, I've been working 13 years and I've been a homemaker and I can't do this. Uh, you can't say I can stay on that career because uh, I need to pay the bills and I have a job and uh, I have all these responsibilities. But either one is making you sick. Have you heard the term? Ah, another day, another dollar. That means you don't like what you're doing if you say those things. Or another, man, another 50 cents. Come on. Let's yeah, exactly. Let's That's what it is now. <laughs> or you're going home and you're dreading going to that garage. You're dreading going home. Yep. You're dreading trying to have to make this person love me more because you haven't set your own respect for yourself. So stop, swipe, look at what you want and pursue that because you are important, you are validated and you can do anything you want in this world. So Denise, what is one thing you say to our listeners out there before we stop, conclude? Well, before we conclude, a good measure of if you, if to me, and Ron, tell me if this resonates with you. If you respect yourself, you have the ability to look yourself in the mirror at the end of every day and say, at any moment today, I did the best I could with the information I had at that moment in time. It resonates on an epic level. I've said that in a lot of my podcasts and I did this myself. I can't go back and say, man, you know what? 10 years ago, I wish I made better decisions. Well, I only can make better decisions because I have more information. Yeah. So that, that really the idea is this word regrets. I regret, I did this, regret, I did that. Yeah, only after the fact, when you're making a decision, whatever it is, you had what information you had, you had what time, and you have to make a decision and you make a decision with the information and time that you had that was available. Right. Did you, so, did you make the best decision at that moment in time? Now, there are times when you can look at a day and say, you know what, at nine o'clock this morning, I knew that was a bad decision mm -hmm. right when I made it. It's another thing to say, I made the best decision at 9 a.m. I found out at four, there was other information that had I had it at 9 a.m. would have affected my but I made the best decision at 9 a.m. Yeah. With the time you had right then and there, make the best decisions you could. Absolutely. And that's huge. That's huge. Um, you know, you can't walk around a lot of regrets. That's excess baggage that you don't need to have on your shoulders. No, and it was time and energy. Absolutely. Uh, and time is something you cannot buy or buy back. Nine o'clock this morning is already gone. It's almost 5 p.m. PST. I can't get back those eight hours that were 9 a.m. So I don't, don't regret. 
I'm doing the best thing I can with the information I have right now. So the way I'm gonna include this is that if you guys having issues with lack of self-confidence, self-esteem, and you want a way to respect yourself more, you want a way to have more happiness. First, it starts with you. Second, it starts with a commitment of wanting to be better. Third, you need to get help. You can't solve all the problems on your own. So for myself, you can find me on the www.ronbusinesscoaching.com or you can go to Lisa Shuffle Podcast at www.lifeshufflepodcast and you can find information on there because we always share our stories because if given them enough information, you can make better decisions for yourself. And you can also come to www.grandslamcoaching.com because I want every day to be a Grand Slam day. At the home Grand run, Slam. baby. Grand Slam might be caught in the outfield, but that's okay. <laughs> we're going to make every day a Grand Slam day. So let, let me help you put your best cleat forward. Let me let Ron, between the two of us, we can help you put the best you forward and get on the road to being the best you there is. And love yourself much more every day. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I wish I could give you a hug right now. Mwah. We'll do a virtual hug. Virtual right. hug, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ron, it has been a pleasure spending December 30th, New Year's Eve Eve with you tonight. And thank you so much for having me. I hope we do more of these in the future. Oh, yeah, we will. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, Mr. Mars, this is Miss Venus cutting out. <laughs> <laughs> cutting out. I love it. <laughs> <laughs>